Well, one of the cooler things that we have got uh, since we lived here has been the tractor. Um, the okay. tractor, where are you going? I'm out of here. <laughs> you don't want to talk about I the mean, tractor? You can talk all you want about that tractor. <laughs> Seriously? Yep. All right. So let's talk about the tractor. One of my more genius purchases. Probably the best thing that we've ever owned has been the tractor. That's arguable. That's arguable? Yes. I thought you didn't want to talk about the tractor. No, okay. So anyways, uh, one of the one of the better things that we probably have ever purchased here, in my opinion, not Sarah's, has been the tractor. Uh, it's the one thing that I have probably learned the most from. And in my opinion, we wouldn't be doing anything that we're doing without it. Well, if Sarah doesn't want to talk about the tractor, that's just fine by me. It's understandable. We got the tractor in March of uh, 2017, and it's been a huge learning curve for me. Um, there's been a lot of repairs on it. Um, it's a pretty old machine though. So it's a 1949. I know uh, based on the stamp that is on the motor that the motor was made uh, March 28th, 1949. So it's always hard to tell with these tractors what was done over the years, you know, what parts were replaced, was this tractor destroyed at one time and then they took another tractor and basically built one tractor out of both tractors that's hard to say um but for all intents and purposes uh she's a 1949 to me and um and it's pretty cool they uh they knew what they were doing back then um, it's pretty impressive all the little gadgets i won't go into great detail on the tractor uh for all the nerds out there if they're tractor nerds they probably know everything there is to know about it but I will show you a few different cool things that I think are pretty neat on it. This right here is the fuel shut off. So you got to turn that on. It's got that sediment bowl with a whole bunch of crap in it, as you can see. Um, one thing that I did add to the tractor was a battery disconnect. Um, that's right here. It's just basically a 100 amp battery disconnect switch. The reason I added that was I, I did have one of these go bad on me and um, I was about 30 feet away from the tractor and it tried to start and thankfully it wasn't in gear or anything like that um, but that made me nervous enough to put a battery disconnect on it just to have one extra safety feature too for the kids although they know not to touch things and they're pretty good at it um the uh the the cool old switch here that's uh the starter switch so when you go to start it up basically you just turn the power on uh, I replaced the ignition key with an ignition switch. That way I could easily just kill it if I needed to while I was out in the field. Um, basically just push that, pull that, make sure it's in neutral. And there she wanted to start right, right there. So pretty simple. Uh, make sure you got the gas on. Otherwise you'll, uh, it'll let you know you run out of gas after a couple of minutes of cruising around. So had that happen a time or two. This here is all brand new this year. Um, they had a piece that was in here that uh, got busted off or they they hammered it off. Well, anyways, it's supposed to have this pin that goes all the way through the rear so you don't end up busting these ears off. And uh, so I replaced that. That was a little bit of a to-do. I had to drill out the old one and there's a sleeve that goes in there and that all works. I bought this uh, rocker online uh it's pretty cool uh if anybody's been paying attention they're yelling at me for running gear on the top i i know i'm not supposed to be running gear on the top but for whatever reason the uh pin that i have isn't long enough to go through the bottom so i think i'm gonna have to get in there and do a little sanding so calm down on that it's okay uh probably the first thing that i bought when i got the tractor was that cover right there for the uh for the pto i don't want to end up with my shirt or my sock or a kid's arm or anything else in that that thing won't stop turning ever that's the one thing about these old tractors is you know in a way they call them widow makers or whatever because nothing stops them you know if i told sarah if i if i'm out on the tractor and i have a heart attack it's either going to end up in the pond or hit a tree or flip over in the ditch because there's nothing that stops these things it just keeps going so 
This one's a four speed with reverse. Um, it does have a transmission and I still, I put a video out asking for guys help and I'll just mention it here again. It has a transmission with a high low gear uh, selector and I have yet to have anybody figure out exactly what transmission it is. So there's some smart person watching this video. What transmission has a handle like that? I've only seen one other one online with the hole in that exact spot. All of the other ones that have the cable uh, cable switch, that hole is actually up on top. It's about an inch up, so this one's a little bit different. Uh, they had cut a hole in the side here uh, to access inside. There's kind of like a, a spring and a bolt that hooks to a, a pin for the transmission for that. Um, other than that, I, I converted it to, uh, to 12 volt. That was one of the other earlier things that I did and put this alternator in. Um, I've replaced the head gasket. I've, I've done all sorts of stuff. So when Sarah's joking about not wanting to hear another dang thing about the tractor, you can believe that I've talked her ear off about this tractor. So, but I'll tell you this, I've never heard her complain when, uh, when the driveway's clear of snow and she didn't lift a finger. So I'll tease her there a little bit. Well, this is implement row. This is where I store all the stuff on the edge of the woods here. I got quite a few different things over the past few years. I've done pretty good, I think, as far as cost is concerned. Um, some of these uh, can really do some amazing stuff. As a matter of fact, it might kind of sound silly for this video, but I picked a small piece of land and went out and used these to show you guys exactly what they can do. So I hope you appreciate the effort that I put in for that. I'm not going to do anything. I don't have anything planned to do with that, that land. So uh, it's just going to just a small little spot just to kind of show you what it can do. This here is an old John Deere disc harrow. This was a gift from my neighbor. Uh, super super awesome gift i um I, I think i told the story in another video so i'll keep keep it short uh for this video but how i came across this was i was showing my dad and my father-in-law the back half of the property and i walked into the weeds and ran my shin directly into the side of one of these things uh, i couldn't couldn't see the discs under the grass and uh ran into it and my dad and i and my uh father-in-law mike we uncovered it and and uh, my dad said, hey, it's an old disc. He was all excited and I thought nothing of it. And then later on down the road, after the whole garden fiasco we had with the other stupid thing I bought, I thought about this laying out there and wondered what condition it was in and went out and kind of took a better look at it and figured it uh, belonged to my neighbor since he owned my land previous. And I called him up and asked him about it. And he, uh, he said, yeah, if you, uh, if you want to get that thing unburied out there, it's yours. So I took it back to the garage and, and tore it completely apart and did a complete restore and rebuild on it. Boy, it looked beautiful when it, when it first got pulled out of the garage after it got all repainted and everything. But she's got some wear on her now, but it's pretty cool. It's got a couple of uh, neat things. It's got this adjustment handle here with all these notches. And basically you just, as you pull this forward, it uh, slides the um, carriages and starts to add pitch to the uh, discs so that you can get more aggressive with the ground. And actually the back carriage works in the same fashion. Um, basically you can just change uh, whichever holes you wanna be hooked into and that'll change the pitch of the rear carriage. For the people who had watched the video where I lost this, uh, this piece here, that piece is pretty important to me and I'm glad I found it. The reason is, is because that piece locks in the entire back carriage. So without that piece, and I probably would have a tough time replacing it or finding another one, uh, it would make the entire back carriage unusable. So I'm pretty excited that I happen to come across and find it. This was actually sitting directly next to it out in the weeds. And uh, I didn't go and uncover this for another year after I got the disc. And I called my neighbor back up and said, boy, uh, there's something else out there I'm interested in. And he said, I tell you what, clean everything out of there. Because there's a whole bunch of crap laying in there. He said, clean everything out of there and lay it out in the yard so I can take a look at what else is in there. And it's yours. So I took this back to the... To the garage and completely tore it apart and repainted and 
and I, I can't remember the name of the company. It's like Peterman's or Peter Smith or some, some company, I think, in Wisconsin made these. I want to say this thing is probably was made sometime in the 80s versus the disc. I think the disc was made uh, somewhere in the 40s, if I was to guess. Then uh, I've seen my, uh, my planter. Uh, still haven't repaired the front of it. Got to do that still if you watch that episode where I had a little problem with that and smash that up a bit. Uh, this here is a, uh, a Ferguson double bottom plow. Uh, this one, I think, was the first implement that we bought. Um, bought it from a guy uh, south of the Twin Cities. Um, he wanted a reasonable, reasonable price compared to other people I had been kind of checking out on Craigslist. And so on a trip uh, down to visit some relatives, Sarah and I stopped in and bought this plow. And, and uh, boy, amazing. After, after uh, trying that that first stupid harrow of the first year that didn't do anything. I'll never forget the look on Sarah's face the first time I went by on the tractor with this plow. And uh, it it absolutely just folds the ground right over, no problem. Amazing. This is a Dearborn 19.6. Uh, this here uh, doesn't have a chain on it typically. I'm just storing that on it. This is a, uh, a back scoop. Um, it's a, only one direction, so you uh, hook it to the tractor and you have to drive into whatever you're going to scoop up. And then uh, you can reach this handle here from the seat and you pull the handle and uh, the bucket dumps itself. So it, it's pretty slick. That was a, a steal of a deal. Um, found this for sale about a half hour from the house and they wanted $20. And I told Sarah, I said, I don't even care if we use it or don't use it. It's, there's more than twenty dollars worth of steel. I'll cut it up and do something with it if if we don't do if we don't use it. This we're not going to talk about. This was a failed experiment. So just get that out of your head. This I bought for uh, I think seventy five bucks, and they originally had a bale spear sticking out the rear end of it. But when I saw it for sale, I wasn't thinking bale spear. I was thinking other things. So I ended up making this hilling machine and I uh, welded these brackets on here and uh, bought these discs online. And this thing's a pretty cool machine. You can you can set the pitch and you can you can hill mound anything you want to plant. It really helps out with our weed control. That way we're not using chemicals or nothing like that. And I've used it in quite a few videos, I'm sure sure you've seen it uh seen it featured in a few uh this here this is kind of sitting a little bit goofy but this is uh get her tipped up here this here is a back blade that uh can be used for moving dirt and everything like that but mainly i use it for moving snow so uh just hooks up to the tractor on the front end over here with the <clears throat> with the three point and uh, you can push or you can drag uh, this particular uh, back blade. You can spin it uh, 360 degrees, depending on which direction you want to move it. And I also made a video where I showed I made a custom pipe uh, for the bottom of the blade. What that helps out with is if you have a gravel driveway in the wintertime when you're plowing snow, you're not uh, pushing gravel around. So that pipe kind of just floats on top of the gravel, uh, makes it so that... Uh, all you're pushing around is snow. This here, this here is another 196 Dearborn. Uh, I bought this one, this uh, back bucket, before I bought the other one that I showed you for 20 bucks. I want to say I paid a hundred and something for this one, um, maybe 150 or something. But because this one was not in as good a condition as the one that I picked up uh, for $20. I ended up doing a little bit of an experiment on this. You'll notice this one might look just slightly different than the uh, than the other one. And what I did was I took the other bracket that was supposed to come here out the front that would hook to the tractor, and I cut these ears off the back and I welded them off of the back of it. And then I made this uh, as I made that top piece so that it hooks on with the uh, with the top link across the back. And then I made my custom-sized 
top link that I don't think they sell or make anywhere else. And, and uh, that thing works pretty good. It looks a little ridiculous on the back of the tractor, but believe it or not, that thing really, really works good. So if there's something that I want to back up into and scoop, this is the one that can get it done. And, uh, and so far it hasn't failed me at all. I've had it for a couple of years. Well, anyways, that's the uh, tour down Implement Row and uh, all the cool farming stuff that uh, goes along with the tractor. Boy, I don't know if we'd be doing as much as we're doing without that tractor. That thing sure has saved us and uh, sure has proven proven to be a good asset to what we're doing here. Um, anytime we need to run around and pick something up, just hop on the tractor and and go do it. If this is the first video in the series that you're uh, enjoying and, and you've made it through my implement rant, I want to say thank you. Um, I want to say hit that like button, of course. Everybody says that. You got to say that, otherwise people don't do it. Hit that like button and then uh, then YouTube thinks it's a good video, so they'll, they'll show it to other people and give them an opportunity to watch it too. So anyways, uh, thank you for watching. Have a wonderful evening. Well, we're back into the repair shop.